All right, welcome to my next video. This is another one in the series of 100 seconds or less videos to help you understand all aspects of digital photography and equipment. So we wanna look at ways to avoid chromatic aberration. I'm sure you already know what chromatic aberration is, but it's that color fringing usually shows up on the edge of photos and it usually shows up in very contrasty areas. And of course, you know you can do that uh, correction in software after you take the photo, but this video is about the ways you can avoid or eliminate or reduce chromatic aberrations in the camera before you have to use software. All right, the first way to reduce or eliminate or avoid chromatic aberration is to simply stop down your lens. Most lenses you can shoot wide open, especially in dark situations where you need to let a lot of light into the camera, but their chromatic aberrations will be worse when your lens is wide open the uh, smallest f-stop number, which is the biggest opening of your lens. So you want to stop down at least two stops maybe. Most lenses have the highest quality image coming from them when you use a f-stop that's at least two full f-stops down from maximum opening. Now stopping down the lens cuts down on the amount of light that's entering to get to your sensor. So you may have to adjust your ISO setting if your shutter speed is too slow and you're getting a blurry photo or you can use image stabilization and shoot with a, sl a slower shutter speed and still get a nice sharp image. All right, the second way you can cut down on chromatic aberration is to only shoot in the middle focal length range of your zoom. So for instance, if you have a 24 to 105 lens, as an example, instead of shooting at the wide open 24 wide angle 24 millimeter where the very zoomed in all the way 105 millimeter, those areas are where you're gonna get the most chromatic aberration in a lens from the widest and the most telephoto. So if you set your zoom somewhere in the middle, you're less likely to get as much chromatic aberration. Okay, the third thing you can do to avoid chromatic aberration is to use a prime lens instead of a zoom lens. Prime lenses have different optical elements and they don't have to be compromised as much because there's no zooming action or no, no zooming feature built into the lens. And so they can make the elements uh, such that there'll be less chromatic aberration in a prime lens in general than a zoom lens. The fourth thing you can do is just have your subject stay away from the edges of the frame as you compose your photograph. In other words, only use the middle section because the chromatic aberrations tend to appear at the edge of your image circle toward the edge of your photograph. The fifth thing you can do is avoid subjects with high contrast. Sometimes that's impossible, but sometimes you can change your angle, you can change the lighting, change the time of day you shoot a subject, and you'll have less contrast within it. For instance, if you're shooting uh, trees without leaves, that they got the dark branches and it's against a white cloudy sky, that's a real big contrast range. Whereas if you shot that on, on a day where there was a blue sky, it's not as contrasty and as those uh, tree limbs contrasted against the blue isn't as much and you'd have a lot less chromatic aberration than you would shooting a dark subject against a white background. Sorry I blew it, I couldn't fit it all in 100 seconds, but you can use any, any number of these techniques together or separately to get the best results to eliminate the chromatic aberration. If you don't want to miss any of the other videos, you get real easy access to the other videos. If you just subscribe to the channel, please give me a like and in the comment tell me which technique you think is the easiest to implement, he said. See you next time.